transition to probably your, your biggest role of all time, maybe, in a, uh, the minstrel role. Well, it, it, yeah, it, it led directly into it because Stu Rosen, who yeah. was the voice director on, on uh, Fraggle Rock, um, came into a session one day and, and pulled out a Ninja Turtles comic book out of his bag yeah. and said, hey, you guys, you're not going to believe this, but look what, this is the next show I'm going to be, I'm going to be directing. And uh, he showed us the comic book and we're like, what? What is that? <laughs> it's going to bomb. You're, you're kidding, right? Yeah. And I did think, I mean, yeah, we all commented about, yeah, you know, that, that's that's not it. going anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's too weird. It's too out there. But this was these were the days of you know My Little Pony and yeah. you know Strawberry Shortcake and yeah. you know those those, those little the little cutesy shows that we were all doing and um, and so and so to look at something like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was just huh? at at the time in 1986 was just too it was a little it just felt a little too edgy yeah you know, a little too cutting edge and. Uh, but Stu, he brought he brought uh, many of us who were in the cast of Fraggle Rock into audition for Ninja Turtles. I auditioned for all four turtles, and um, and the rest as they say. And the Michelangelo role. East War, yeah. Uh, initially, I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't. They they didn't cast me as Michelangelo. Okay. They they knew that they they narrowed down the four guys who were going to be the four turtles and they knew that Barry was going to be Donatello they knew that Rob was going to be Raphael but they hadn't yet decided even right into our first session uh, whether Cam or I were going to be Michelangelo oh. and Leonardo uh, vice versa and um, and so the way they, they worked it uh, was Stu Rosen uh, it was basically you know really just a, a crapshoot it was a toss oh. of the coin he says to me, he says, Tony, listen, um, we're going to try, he said to both of us, uh, we're going to try both of you guys out in both parts, and then we'll make our decision, you know, after the read-through, and then we'll proceed from there. And so he, it was really just a, a, a random choice. He just said, Tony, why don't you do Michelangelo first, can you do Leonardo first, wow. on this first pass, and then we'll, and then we'll switch. And after that first pass, um, and I've told the story before, and, and still have never found out kind of what what the answer to it was, and I don't know that I'll ever find out. But there was something going on behind the scenes, in in the control room, where there there obviously was a, a bit of some some bit of friction going on, mm -hmm. and and this this idea of changing parts after that first read through um, became unimportant. There were other things that they were more concerned with dealing with. Clearly, mm -hmm. and so when we went to do our second read through, uh, I asked Stu, you know, should we? Do you want us to change? And he said, No, 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 just just, just keep the way it is. Huh. And um, you know, and sort of we'll we'll talk about that later, kind of. I see. Idea. Push it off. Yeah, and and uh, how was that? We just we never talked about it after that. We did that first that first uh, episode, and. They just kept me as Michelangelo. They kept Cam as Leonardo. Yeah. He never got a chance to try Michelangelo, and I never I was got a say, chance to try. Did you ever hear his, his version of the, of the character? Yeah. No, but I know that Cam does a did a great surfer, huh. you know, valley dude. Um, yeah. And uh, and so it, and really honestly, in my ear, back in those days, and again being, you know, relatively new in town, and you know. Here, I was starting to kind of get a feel for the landscape and kind of who was who and who kind of the big guns were and, and stuff. And, and I, I knew that Cam was starting to get a lot of work at the time, too. And, and, uh, um, and I, I, I knew his kind of surfer dude and uh, had, had heard it. And, and I thought, to me, I was thinking, well, he should be doing Michelangelo because he does this way better than I do. All I was doing was just sort of trying to think of kind of Sean Penn and Fast Times at Ridgemont High, sure. you know, kind of a burnt out thing. And they just didn't want Michelangelo too drugged out, you know, too course, burnt out. Obviously. So I had to kind of pull back on that and kind of up the fun, you know, kind of amp, amp up the fun uh, aspect of him a bit. But uh, but yeah, in, in my mind, I was thinking Cam should be Michelangelo. I could do that straight ahead sort of, you know, leader hero kind of guy. Um, just fine. Yeah. Uh, and just we never did it, you know. So, wow. So it just stayed the way it was for ten years. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, what about the tick? So how did how did that whole thing happen? Was that that was an audition process? I the the 
TIC was an audition process, and my gosh, as, as I recall, they were auditioning everybody in town. Uh -huh. And I remember when I went to audition for it, 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 it sort of took me back to, I don't really have a process that I go through. I know that there are a lot of guys in this business who, who really have a process. Uh, and if, especially if, 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 like I said, the, the guys who work so much are, are good impressionists. Um, they've got a, a, another actor or another character actor or another you know, public figure or somebody that they can sort of channel that they think might be a funny take on doing a particular character. Yeah. And so often that's true because, you know, you, you hear them do that and you think, who, who would have thought that Don Knotts, that a Don Knotts character as this ba -dum -ba -dum would work? And it does, and it's hilarious. And you know, then there you got Jeff Bennett doing it, and sure. it's just you're on the floor rolling. Um, so there's like a list, a list people in that that show. In which show? In, in the tick. Oh my gosh! Yeah, boy, we had a great cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And um, and it was such a treat. As much as I loved working with Mickey Dolenz, because yeah. you know I was I. I, I huge monkeys fan when I was a kid and so yep. meeting him the first time was such a trip for me <laughs> it was like you know I, I was just uh, yeah pee in my pants <laughs> um, but but it came out of the audition process and uh, but I remember I, what I was going to say was I don't really have much of a process that I go through and not being an impressionist and really having anybody to draw upon I'm sort of kind of shooting in the dark and so oftentimes very often the things that I try uh, tend to be sort of very generic, you know, um, <clears throat> kind of safe and not particularly creative, um, you know, but, but, but a way to go, you know. Um, but the guys who come up with these like killer characters and, and these impressions are very often the ones who nail this stuff because it's so hilarious. You like get it, you laugh out loud right from the start, you know. But when I looked at the tick, there were a couple. There were a couple of voices that came to me that when I when I read the lines, as bizarre as they were, and and I looked at what the character was and I read a description of him, I I thought to myself very much what I thought when I auditioned for the very first character on, on uh, Inspector Gadget. When I first looked at that that picture of him, it's like I immediately knew what he sounded like, and I just like did it. Well, I felt the same way about the tick. It's like I immediately knew what I thought he sounded like. And, and I didn't get it. Hmm. And I kept pressing in that direction. And the direction was what I ended up doing once I ended up getting the part. But I didn't get it the first time around. And uh, they, they went ahead and, and did it with, uh, with, with someone else and did the first episode and decided that they didn't like it, wanted to recast the character of the tick and brought a few of us who had auditioned the first time back in for a callback. And they brought me back in, and Sue Blue, who was going to be directing the show, and who had directed Ninja Turtles all those sure. years, and, and uh, was, it was explained to me, Here, now here's what they want, here's what they re or really are looking for. And I'm listening to her and I'm thinking, okay, I hear you, but I still don't think that that's exactly it, you know. They were, they were saying they really wanted to go lighter register, younger, mm -hmm. guileless, oh, um, interesting. kind of, kind of a, kind of a, kind of G, you know, sort of very wide-eyed huh. sort of thing. And I could get, I, I got that, I could understand that, I could see where they were coming from in terms of wanting his, an aspect to his character to, 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 to have that feel. But for me, there needed to be something and, and what I was going to say is, so, so what immediately came to mind was Gary Owens, yeah. uh, Ted Knight, you know, Ted Baxter on Mary Tyler Moore. Um, and, then this, and, then, and then this character from Fireside Theater that I had grown up in high school listening to, uh, they, they did this character, Nick Danger. Um, Phil Austin just did this great character, and it was such a great bit. And in high school, the big thing in when I was a, a, a junior in high school was to memorize this entire, you know, tw 20 minute long, you know, bit of Nick Danger, Third Eye, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I remember loving this character so much, and there was something that was, uh, there was, there was, 
there was something about these three characters that that mashed together with some of my own like stuff thrown in that seemed to embody what I thought the tick, tick was. So I, I kept sort of pressing for that to kind of as much as I could, but with trying to balance it out with what they were saying they wanted, because I, I wanted to get the part. You sure. Know? So they cast me. And, uh, and because they'd already recorded the first episode once, they, what they needed is really only me to come in and just re-record Tick's lines for that whole first episode. Um, and they brought Mickey in, Mick Dolan's in, uh, because many of his scenes were with Arthur. So it was just the two of us in the studio over to Scream Music. And uh, so we did that, that first episode like that. And then the rest of the three seasons beyond that were all done you know, together ensemble as a, a full cast which is really the way you want to do it because so much happens in those sure. sessions where you're playing off of each other sure. that, that gives so much more energy and life uh, to, the, to the show, to the episode, than you could possibly get than if everybody was recording their lines wild. Yeah, right. You know, and separate, sure, sure, sure. Like they do so much of the, the feature animation now. But um, yeah, so that's that's how I got that. And, and your intuition you know, won out, I guess, with, with it, it did there. eventually, yeah. yeah. It's funny, if I, if I listen to those first couple episodes, I can hear how his register is quite a bit higher and, and lighter and he, you know, a little more earnest and stuff, you know, but as I sort of relaxed into it and, and as we all kind of got a feel for, for the show and for the various characters and how, you know, the interplay and yeah. all of a sudden the writing was just always so brilliant on yeah. that show yeah. that, um, that he kind of you know morphed into what he became, and it was the most fun I ever had doing animation. You know, in the end of each of those episodes, um, Ben would write write this sort of this short rant that Tick would go off on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, about something. Yeah. And and I remember being so blown away by by the silliness and the and, the, and just the, the writing of those 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 little moments at the very end of each episode. That that it, it got to the point for me where when I when we would go to record an episode I'd show up and they'd give me my script and uh, you know I'd circle, go through the script and circle my lines and kind of read through it get an idea where the show was the episode was going. But when I got to that last page or so with that rant on it, yeah. I wouldn't read it. Huh. I didn't want to read it because I didn't want to know. I wanted the first read through to be cold because mm -hmm. I found that. As I read it for the first time out loud, it would hit me in such a way that <laughs> would like just it's like the gears would start turning and it, and I'd start getting amped up and, and into the, the, the fun and the spirit of whatever that rant happened to be. And um, more often than not, they ended up uh, keeping the, that first take wow. of what I would do. Gosh, that was fun. Those were fun days working on that show. Yeah, that was, I bet. That was a blast, yeah.